Alexander Rakic sustained a pretty serious looking knee injury here in UFC Fight Night, and in this video, we're gonna talk about what exactly happened. Welcome back everybody, I'm Dr. Brian Suter. Now, unfortunately, this looks to be a pretty severe knee injury for Alexander Rakic. This was unusual because it was essentially a non-contact knee injury, despite being in a very contact heavy sport. And of course, Rakic's lead leg, his left leg was getting beaten up all night by Blahovich, but this was actually the right leg where if you look closely here, you can actually see the pop. And what we're seeing there is essentially the tibia or the shin bone that's displaced forward or anterior. And then all of a sudden right there, pops back into its proper position. This anterior tibial translation and that shift that we see backwards is an ACL injury until proven otherwise. This is actually a similar position to what we see with sports like basketball or football when somebody is running and then they jump or they cut and they suffer a non-contact ACL tear. Here, Rakic is backpedaling, but still in that position right there, you can see how his right knee is basically going inwards a little bit into that dynamic knee valgus with the knee falling inward. And what that does is it causes the tibia to internally rotate a little bit relative to the femur. You get this high axial force transmitted through the knee and that causes that ACL to potentially snap because of an excess level of force. In this view, we can't quite see that tibia snap back as much, but you can still right there appreciate a little bit of the tibia being forward and then boom, kind of popping back into position. From the top view here, we see one other clue that suggests that this could be an ACL tear, and that's the fact that Rakic's right foot is positioned outward. Whenever the foot is externally rotated, what that does is it tends to cause that tibia to internally rotate relative to the thigh bone, and so you get this combination of forces where the knee basically goes inward, and that ACL can pop. If you look at our biodigital anatomy tool here, the exact position of the ACL can help explain why we see that tibia shift forward and then pop back into place whenever an ACL tear occurs. The ACL sits deep inside the knee, stands for anterior cruciate ligament, and it basically runs from the front to the back of the knee in a cross pattern. If we hide the femur or the thigh bone and we look kind of straight down, this is going to be the ACL. And so it runs, if anything, a little bit from the medial or the inner side of the tibia out to the lateral side of the femur. So it's running at a bit of an angle. That means that whenever you take the tibia, you internally rotate it this way, relative to the femur, that's gonna put more tension on the ACL. But then because the ACL is running in this direction from the back to the front, what it's basically doing when it functions is it's preventing that tibia from moving forward. Whenever the tibia wants to move forward, it tensions that ACL ligament and the ACL keeps it in place. So if the ACL is torn, then there's no restraint to that motion of the shin bone going forward and that's why we see that tibial translation going forward and then basically popping back into normal position whenever the force is taken off of the foot. So now looking at this sequence again in the moment just before his foot makes contact with the ground and you get this resulting high force transmitted up through the knee, we can see that tibia right here shifted forward. You can catch a little bit of kind of this sharp outline in the front of the tibia, suggesting that the ACL could be injured and the tibia has essentially slid forward because its restraint is gone. But then as the weight comes off of the leg, we can see it pop back right there to now it's in its proper position. So it's that little transition from the tibia being displaced forward to then the weight being off of the leg and the tibia popping back into its proper position, suggesting the likelihood of an ACL tear. Just for the repetition here, I wanna show you another really classic example of when we see this tibial translation. This was an Alabama receiver back in the national championship game and right there, this is a little bit more profound. But again, same sort of position of that knee being inward, foot plants, ACL gets torn, the tibia shifts forward, and then as the weight comes off, pop, the tibia goes back up into its normal alignment. Here with Rakic, the foot plants, that tibia pops forward, weight comes off of the foot, and then all of a sudden right there, we see the tibia snap back into place. You can have varying degrees of ACL injuries in terms of complete versus partial, and so certainly the MRI is gonna help detail the full extent of the injury, and you can also have other things like injury to the meniscus or other ligaments or cartilage within the knee. This is one of those rare times in sports where we actually can see the bones move and have a pretty good sense of what's going on. And so even though we can't say without being there and doing the exam with 100% certainty, this is gonna be an ACL tear until proven otherwise and something that you almost have to rule out rather than rule in. That's it for the video, everybody. Let me know as always any questions or comments down below. And until next time, we'll see you later. Bye.